I'm William Cerrone, and um, my brother and I have designed and we support the power system for uh, this home, this private residence out here. And basically how we ended up here was when we priced out the cost to bring power out from Ameren, it was rather prohibitive and there were several issues that we had to deal with. There was the cost and then there was also landowner rights and, uh, and other issues like that. So we ended up deciding that the best bet was to go out on our own and build an off-grid system. So that's what we have here. Uh, you're going to see batteries that store power when there's not renewable energy available. Uh, you're going to see all the equipment to convert the power and make it ready for use in a home or in a so that you can use your typical appliances and modern conveniences that we all that we all rely on every day. Um, so that's what we'll see. What we have here is a propane generator. And this propane generator is started automatically by the system inside. This uh, generator is necessary in periods of the winter and also periods of the summer when uh, demand in the home demand for energy in the home exceeds what's available from the sun or the wind. Uh, some you get good spells and bad spells during the winter time. We had a lot of generator runtime. Probably the generator averaged running seven to ten hours in a 24-hour period. Whereas now that we've come into March and we've had a lot of time, the generator has probably only run uh, maybe 20 hours total in the whole month of, whole month of March, and we're looking for April to be even better. What we have in this room is basically the heart of the system. This is where all of the inputs from the wind turbine and the solar panel, this is where all of that energy comes into. Uh, it comes in through pipes, uh, conduits out of the ground here, and then through various equipment that I'll talk about here briefly. Um, the power is rectified, conditioned, and goes into the battery bank. So here we have a series of uh, lead acid batteries, lead acid deep cycle batteries that are wired up to form a 48 volt nominal battery bank. Uh, this battery bank is enough to support, depending on the load of the house, this battery bank is enough to support the house for, with no input for between um, 4 hours and 20 hours. Um, you know, you use more power in the winter time when you're heating a lot. Um, when you're doing clothes, laundry, things like that, and you use a lot of power in the summertime mm -hmm. when your air conditioner is running, the uh, springtime is a good time. You don't have to use as much power. Mm -hmm. So, um, so what we have here is a battery bank. To the right of the system, uh, these units here, there's one for each of the three solar panels, and what they do is they take the power in off of the solar panels and step it down to a, a voltage that's appropriate for the battery bank and they also find the maximum power point. Um, basically when a solar panel, if a solar panel has no load attached to it, it can um, it can have a high voltage of something like 100 volts, 120 mm. volts. Uh, this takes and it finds the right loading characteristics for the solar panel to get the most power uh, out of the available sun. So that's, that's these three units here. Um, along similar lines, this unit here takes the power from the wind turbine, which comes off the wind turbine as wild AC. Uh, takes that wild AC and it rectifies it down to DC power at 48 volts, which goes into the battery bank. So the wind turbine generates AC and it's turned into DC. The batteries are the um, solar panels generate DC and then it just has to be stepped down to match the battery voltage. Um, from there, the power leaves the batteries and goes through these units, which we have eight of them hooked up here, goes into these units, and they're called inverters, and the inverters take the, the battery power, turn it into AC power at 240 volts and 120 volts, which is what your typical household appliances are set up to run on, um, single phase AC 12240. Um, so that's what these eight units do, and they they have a computer that turns on the right amount of them to match the load. Um, and then that same computer is what also starts the generator when it senses that uh, these have depleted the batteries to a point where the generator needs to run, the generator starts. Um, all of the equipment for turning the DC from the solar panels into DC for the batteries and the inverters are all supplied by the same manufacturer called Outback Power Systems that allows the system to work well with itself. Um, 
And then the uh, the wind turbine was built by a company down in Oklahoma called uh, Bergie Wind Power. So how many computers are there all together? You said that the solar is automated as well. Yep, the solar is automated. There's a bunch of little computers because the, um, the trackers, they're independent. They think for themselves as far as which direction to face. Mm -hmm. And then it comes in here and then these three computers, they each one of them manages each solar panel individually to get it to the battery voltage. Mm -hmm. And then there's one central computer that controls the inverters and then mm -hmm. the starting of the generator. And then we've mm -hmm. got a monitoring computer that oversees the entire system and helps us to manage and track our power um, over a mm -hmm. long period of time. We actually have historical data. We can see what the house has used since the house has been installed and we can see what the, um, you know, what when we've had power and when we've had to run the generator over the last several years. So we really are starting to build a wealth of information about what this region mm -hmm. is capable of developing as far as wind and solar power. Mm -hmm. Now is this something that the average homeowner could afford? How do um, you, how, what kind of range are we talking about? The equipment, you can get into this, especially with the grid tie system. If you can keep the batteries out of the system, um, you can be at a much cheaper price point. A homeowner can get into this for roughly 10000 maybe a, a hair less. Mm -hmm. um, and you can go, the sky's really the limit as far as how much power you need, mm -hmm. how much power you can make. It really all depends on a lot of factors. Uh, the equipment, the qu equipment and installation, could be as low as ar around ten thousand. They could be much higher. Depends mm -hmm. on where, what kind of a space you have available. You know whether there's a lot of trees around that would have to be dealt with. Whether we would have to, you know, run a hundred or a thousand mm -hmm. feet of cable or whatever. So it really depends, and it also depends on a homeowner's um, power usage characteristics. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Some of the people that we've talked to use just an inordinate amount of power and to really make a difference in their power bill would take such a humongous system that over the lifespan of what the equipment would probably last, wouldn't pay for itself. Mm -hmm. Homeowners who are more thrifty uh, as far as their power usage could see a return on investment of 15 to 25 years, which is within mm -hmm. the spectrum of the lifetime of the equipment. Because you guys went both ways on this. You, you not only are generating power, but you did a lot of efficiency moves as yep, well. Yep, the house was built to be extremely power efficient um, so that this system didn't have to be sized to be enormous. Mm -hmm. That was that was the real plan. So insulation is money well spent. Every dime you spend on insulation when building a house, for example, mm -hmm. is something that you'll get back over the lifespan of the house.